Let us now focus on quantifying work. There are many types of work. For this discussion, we will examine expansion work. Many reactions form gases, and expansion work is done to make room for these gases against an external pressure. The work done by the system is quantified as the integral over the initial volume to the final volume of minus P external times dV. This integral is illustrated in the figure on the bottom left, which depicts a before and after scenario of a gas expanding by a certain volume against an external pressure. There are two notes. The first is that the minimum amount of work is done when the external pressure is equal to zero, and this is called a free expansion. The second point is that the maximum amount of work is done when the external pressure is only infinitesimally less than the pressure inside the system. So, when the external pressure is only slightly different than the internal pressure of the vessel during the expansion, then the maximum amount of work is done. This type of process is called reversible. To make this discussion a little easier, we will hold the temperature constant. In other words, we are discussing an isothermal process. The integral presented in the previous slide is illustrated in both images. In the left image, the external pressure, which is plotted on the y-axis, varies gradually where the external pressure is set to be a little less than the internal pressure at each step of the expansion of the gas. The area under this curve, or the integral of the external pressure over small changes in volume, gives the work performed and is shaded in green. The figure on the right illustrates non-reversible expansion. The case described is one where the external pressure is constant and lower than the internal pressure. When the process begins, the pressure inside immediately drops to the value of the external pressure, and then the volume expands from the initial to the final value. The work performed is again the integral of the external pressure over small changes in volume, or the area under the curve. When compared to the reversible process, it is clear that there is less work being done in the irreversible process. We can quantify reversible isothermal work of an ideal gas by doing the following. When the system expands through an infinitesimal volume, dV, the infinitesimal amount of work performed is minus P external times dV. At each stage, the external pressure is the same as the internal pressure of the gas. Applying the ideal gas law, we can substitute nRT over V for the external pressure. Then, integrating between Vf and Vi gives minus n rt times the natural logarithm of vf over vi. Let's now do two examples where we're going to quantify calculating the work done by an expanding gas. And so in this first example, we're just doing what is the work done by a gas expanding from 3 decimeters cubed to 5 decimeters cubed against an external pressure of 100 kilopascals. And so we'll start with just our generic work expression where it's just this integral over the initial to the final volume of minus p external times a small change in volume. Now the one thing you always want to make sure of whenever doing these problems is that you want to make sure that when you're multiplying a pressure by a volume that the units then work out that you're going to end up with is joules in the end which is going to be what work is going to be quantified in. And so what we can see here is that the pressure is in kilopascals and we can see that the units of volume are in decimeters cubed. So let's just look at that really quickly to make sure that when we multiply these two numbers together, we're actually going to get joules in the end. So one decimeter, that's equal to 10 to the minus 1 meters. And so if we're going to take or find a decimeter cubed, then we have to take the cube of 10 to the minus 1, which is just 10 to the minus 3 meters. We also know that a kilopascal is equal to 10 to the 3 pascals. And a pascal, as we saw previously, is a newton per meter squared. What that means is that if we're going to multiply a decimeter cubed by a kilopascal, then what we end up with is 10 to the minus 3 meters cubed times 10 to the 3 newtons per meter squared and then we can start crossing out terms. 10 to the minus 3 cancels out 10 to the 3. I have meters squared on bottom and I have meters cubed on top. And so that means then the units that I'm left with is a newton meter or a joule. So this means that when I go through this calculation, I can directly plug in the 100 kilopascals and 
the decimeters cubed term that I get out of doing this integral, because when I multiply those two numbers together, I will get a joule. So let's perform this integral. Work is equal to, well, my VF and my VI, that's between 3 and 5. My external pressure is 100, and I'm integrating over dV. Here I have a constant inside my integral, so I can just pull that out front. Work is equal to negative 100 times the integral between 3 and 5 dV. Well, the integral of dV is just going to be equal to V. And so then that's going to be evaluated between 5 and 3. I apply my fundamental theorem of calculus. 100 times 5 minus 3. Well, that just gives me 2. That means my work is equal to negative 200 joules. Let's now look at a slightly more complicated example. In this case, we're going to calculate the work done where we're going to start with one mole of argon gas and is contained in a cylinder starting at one decimeter cubed at 25 degrees Celsius. It expands isothermally and reversibly to two decimeters cubed. And so again, we're going to start with our generic work expression. Work is equal to the integral between VI and VF minus P external times dV. And so what we're going to first realize is that this process is reversible. And so what that means is that um, the external pressure, we can then make that equal to the internal pressure. And so then what that means is that the external pressure is then equal to nRT over V, where all of these are the internal properties of the gas. What we're going to do then is we're going to take that value and we're just going to just substitute that in to our general expression. And so then now we can write work is equal to, well, my initial volume is one decimeter cubed. The um, final volume is two decimeters cubed. We have minus nRT over V times dV. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out a bunch of constants. So I can pull out the negative sign, I can pull out the R, the N, and I can also pull out the T, because remember we have an isothermal process, so that means that T is constant. So that can also come out of my integral. And so all I'm left with is between 1 and 2, we have dV over V. And as we've seen, if we do the integral of 1 over V, once that's evaluated, that just gives me the natural logarithm of v, and that's evaluated between 1 and 2. So at this point, we just apply the fundamental theorem of calculus. w is equal to nRT ln 2 minus, and I'll put these in brackets, minus nRT natural logarithm of 1. And so in this case, I can pull out a minus nRT, and what that leaves me with is natural logarithm of 2 minus the natural logarithm of 1. And so then that just becomes the ratio of 2 over 1 inside this natural logarithm, which in the end is just the natural logarithm of 2. So now at this point, we're going to start plugging in actual numbers. This n, that's just the moles. This t, well, that's the temperature in Kelvin. And that this natural logarithm, even though I've got... Um, a volume over a volume, but since I've got volume over volume, those units cancel out. So this is actually unitless. And the reason why I'm going into this discussion is because our last value that we have to figure out here is our R. And there are many different types of R. The two that are most commonly used is this one gas constant, which is 8.3145, and its units are decimeters cubed, times kilopascals, divided by moles and Kelvin. And there's this other one, this other R, which is 0 0.08205, and that's in decimeters cubed. But the pressure is measured in atmospheres, and the bottom is still moles and Kelvin. And so the question here is, which one of these values are we going to put in? Because we know we've only got one mole, we've got a temperature in Celsius, which you can easily calculate into Kelvin. And so the R that we're going to choose, in this case, what we're going to look at is, here this R is going to be multiplied by moles and Kelvin. And that means that on the bottom, we're going to, in both cases, delete the moles and the Kelvin. 
And so really what's important is just the two units that are on top. So if we start with this decimeters cubed times kilopascals, well, we know, and we just found in the previous problem, that that's going to equal to joules. And that's exactly what we want this thing to spit out, because that's what work is. We also can see here in this other case, we've got decimeters times atmospheres. This, I actually don't know what this equals to, but I know that it doesn't equal to joules. And so in this case, the value that we're going to choose then to stick in for R is this 8.3145, because that in the end will give us joules. And it's important to always do this unit analysis when you perform these types of calculations, because sometimes it is convenient to use this 0.08205, because this atmosphere unit that's included in this constant is actually useful to have. But this is a case where choosing one number over the other can either give you the correct answer or the incorrect answer. And so it's very important that you do think about this for a minute before you actually start plugging in constants. So now that we've selected our gas constant, let's plug in all these numbers. Work is equal to minus 1.0, the number of moles. The gas constant we're going to use is 8.3145 because it gives us the correct units. The temperature in this case is 25 plus 273.15. And then we have the natural logarithm of 2. And when we multiply all these numbers together, the final value we get is minus 1.72 times 10 to the 3 joules.